Hey everybody, welcome to our daily live session. I'm Nick from Defined Life, and uh, I just got off the phone. Sorry, I put my headphones away. Um, yeah, just uh, all sorts of stuff going on this morning. Uh, I got up at my appointed discipline time. Actually got up a little bit early, got up about 5.30. Lynn woke up early this morning. So uh, I, uh, she woke me up and I in turn woke up a little bit early. So that's okay. Um, got a little bit of, uh, got a little bit of uh, uh, positive reinforcement from my meditation this morning that I'll go into pretty soon here. But how are you doing? What's going on with your week? It's, uh, it's hump day. Um, you know, midweek, although anymore, it doesn't feel like midweek, right? It just feels like a day. <laughs> um, weekends are no longer weekends and just, it's like every day is just another day, which is actually sort of okay, uh, from some perspective. So it's all right. It's all right. Uh, last night we, we were supposed to make fajitas. Uh, we try to have like a Mexican theme on Tuesdays. We do taco Tuesday. And I was going to make fajitas, but I forgot I froze the meat that I was going to use for fajitas. So I ended up making uh, bratwurst, Italian sausage, and um, uh, kielbasa. So we had like a little bit of a smorgasbord of uh, sausage meats uh, for dinner. Uh, we'll freeze some of it. You know, we kind of cook and then and freeze some of it, have some for leftovers the next day. Had a little bit of pasta. So, but that's us, uh, you know, having our dinner. Um, you know, it was good. Yesterday was good. Um, I'm going to today now with, with that sausage, I'm going to make uh, pizza today. I'm going to do homemade pizza on our new, uh, kitchen cart that took me two days to put together. I'm going to roll out the dough and do all that kind of good stuff. And we have some fresh basil. I have some buffalo mozzarella. Uh, we have some ricotta cheese. I'm going to make a white pizza for Lynn. And although I'll tell you what, the last white pizza I made was phenomenal. So I'm going to make the white pizza for everybody. And then I'm also going to try uh, to make a, a sausage pizza with some red sauce and, um, uh, you know, the hot sausage that I grilled yesterday. And so it's a cool day today. We might not even make it over 65, so I might light the fireplace. And this cool feature in this house that we didn't even know the woman uh, before us was using it as a decorative shelf in the fireplace, but we didn't realize it. There's actually like a, a, a an oven in the fireplace. It's just this small little area above the fireplace that I think you're supposed to put the hot coals from the fireplace into the oven and then like it cooks whatever's on the grilling grate. So we're going to try this today, I think. Um, I'm going to try to bake the pizza um, on this grate and see what happens. Um, and maybe I'll take a photo and show you what happens tomorrow. Otherwise, we're just going to throw it in the regular oven and just bake a pizza. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited to try it out. And then last night, at the end of the night, we uh, hung out on the front porch. I uh, drank a beer. Lynn drank a Truly, uh, which I've never had before. It's pretty good and not as sweet as a White Claw. Uh, and ate some peanuts and uh, just kind of sat outside. You know, the, it was kind of breezy. Just kind of hung out outside, listened to a little bit of music. Um, got to meet some of the neighbors that were walking by. So it was just overall nice night. And then we watched another episode of the Jordan documentary. I mean, you know, <laughs> we got to do that every day. Um, but so, uh, this morning I woke up and got into my meditation. Uh, but before that I did my define my day. And this is what I wrote down. And this is kind of when you know, like you're on the right track. So, um, oops, I didn't move my, my sticker. Um, so, uh, I wrote, uh, I appreciate a nice neighborhood, right? Something I've been looking forward to for a long time. So I want to make sure I identify that I appreciate it. And then today I will avoid letting it go by too fast. And so this is a, this is something that, you know, being sort of middle-aged at this point, you know, in my forties, um, I have the sense that my boys are growing up too fast, that life is going by too fast. And I want to try to be present in the moment a little bit more 
And uh, let me put this down in case this isn't good. Um, so I want to be present a little bit more uh, with uh, with life and enjoy life a little bit better. Um, you know, and not like hopefully just like because it goes by so fast, right? So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm losing my thought here. But I want to make sure that I'm enjoying it because I worked so hard to get here, right? So, you know, our priority for a while has been to move into this house and our priority has been to get our kids into a nicer neighborhood and our priority is to be good parents. Um, you know, like our overall priorities and values, right? And I don't, now that I'm here, you know, I want to make sure that I enjoy it as we continue to move forward toward other goals, right? Uh, so, you know, as I'm writing this down, you know, I appreciate a nice neighborhood. Uh, today I will avoid letting it go by too fast. After I do this, I then get into my meditation for today. And um, I see this. And this is, I'm skipping the meme of the day because I feel like this is more important than the meme, right? Um, focusing on meaning, we miss discovery. Focusing on the destination, we miss the journey. And so... To me, you know, if I were to just, okay, I, I got this goal, check it off the list, let's go to the next one, I miss enjoying where we are now. So now I'm here, right? Now I, I got this leg of the journey completed. I still need to walk around and go, I enjoy this. I still need, even the things I don't enjoy, you know, even when you're going through something you don't enjoy, what can I learn here? You know, uh, there's meaning in this. What is it? What can I figure out? And so wherever you are today, take a moment to appreciate it. Take a moment to not let it go by too fast. Because we're here, we're alive, we're hopefully healthy. We're growing as individuals. We're learning. We get to spend time together. Take that opportunity to enjoy and appreciate where you are and avoid letting it go by too fast. So that was kind of my, when I, I wrote it down and then I, and then I read that on my, uh, on my meditation app today. And I thought, wow, this is, this, this is just kind of a, the meant to reinforce it in myself right now. Absolutely. So yeah, so yeah. Uh, let's get into the comments here. Good morning. Good morning, Janice. Good morning, Anna. Good morning, Levy. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, Lori. Uh, good morning, Debbie. Welcome to a wonderful Wednesday. Uh, Janice, at the new table. You're correct. That is at the new table. So that, that was what I put together last week. <laughs> Um, good morning, Kelly. Will I be coming out with a digital version? Uh, we may, we may eventually. So there's two, two components of this. One is fundamentally the brain operates differently when you're writing things down on paper. So like it, for me, writing on paper will always be the way that I do it. Um, I understand more people are moving digital and I'm not trying to be anything other than, uh, the most helpful possible. Um, and, but I also realize that, you know, it, it's just, some people just don't want to write things down. They don't want one more thing to carry around. So we will probably come out with a digital one eventually. Uh, it's a big investment and even trying to find the right company to make that investment with is a hard thing to do. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, it's uh, you know, and that's number two is, is the, you know, the, the amount of time and, and money and energy that has to go into something like that. I don't want to take away from what we are currently doing. So I want to give you the best product possible and being a paper planner, the brain just digests physically writing differently than going like this. And, and that's why we've focused on paper. And then two, I can't divert my energy right now toward a project like that. Um, I wanna make sure that we're working with the customers that are using the current product um, 
And while it might not seem too different, um, you know, to the customer, uh, for me, it is. Um, so I want to make sure we're, we're maintaining our focus on the right thing. So we will get there. Um, but right now, um, I, I don't think that it's, it's not like in our priority list of things and our big spitball list of things we have over here, of what we wanted to approach. Um, the digital version is not quite rising to the top yet. Uh, good morning, Carrie. <laughs> you needed to hear this from this morning. I needed to hear it too. Uh, you know, it's funny. You know, we can always sort of be on the same wavelength, right? We're all kind of going through this together. Good morning, Amy. Uh, big day in your family. Daughter is in the hospital in labor. What? First baby and first grandbaby. Congratulations, Grandma. <laughs> that's uh, that's awesome. That's amazing. Um, that's really really cool. Congratulations. Good for you. You gotta you gotta send me some photos. Let me see that baby. Boy or girl? What do we have? Uh, good morning, Angel. Good to see you, uh, Debbie. I can't think properly unless I'm writing it down. I've tried and failed too many times. And and Debbie, I agree with you. Um, there is, you know, like it, 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 you're not focusing completely unless you're writing it down. And the same with journaling. Uh, you can type something in a log, like in a note taking app or whatever. But when you're journaling, physically journaling, the brain just works it differently. It maybe takes a little bit longer to write it. You have to think it through better, be more efficient. And the brain, for some reason, and there's scientific studies that prove this, the brain treats writing as real and something in an electronic device as not real. For it, there's, a, there's, a, there's a distinction there. Uh, plus, when you're on your device, you're also sort of weaving in and out of different things. When you're in this book, there's only one thing you can do with it. When you're weaving in and out of Facebook to um, Instagram to your note taking, and then a pop up comes up for an email, and you go to that pop up, and there's just too much going on. Where and it's a multi-use device where this is only one thing. So you kind of shift gears when you get into it, and that's what I want you to do. Um, Angel, today is surgery day for your daughter, so hopefully after this she will have good health. That is great. Good to hear. Good to hear. Um, keep us up to date with that. Either either in this or fire me a message and let me know how that goes today. Kelly, uh, thank you for being authentic and I appreciate you sharing your thoughts. I didn't know about the brain either. Yeah, it was it was. Um, I I naturally just sort of tend to go toward writing. And uh, even I tried, even in sales calls back in the day, um, you know, early on, I would try to do even a, like a note taking app like Microsoft OneNote where you would write down and it would translate your writing into, into digital notes. It still didn't work for me. And I ended up reverting back to this and just writing in the back of the book as I go through a meeting or a sales call with a customer. And, uh, and I might even retype the notes later if I wanted to keep it digitally. Uh, or I would even just staple it into a file for that customer. So, you know, it's not that I'm trying to be old school, although I did grow up kind of on the cusp of everything. Um, it's uh, it, it just works better for me. Yeah, congratulations. As a former preschool teacher for 20 years, yes, the boys growing up will go too fast, but so much fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, the 10 year old now, like I can just see it, you know, like there's little parts where he's embarrassed and, you know, things that happen that you're like, oh man, I know what to, I know what he's going to be getting into. Um, so, you know, you, you, I look at the younger one and I think, you know, I still have those years with him and, and, you know, it's just, you know, we're, we're it's, it's just the thing, the things that parents go through, you know. Being a grandma is the best thing ever. Yeah, you get to do... Oh, it's a boy, Carrie. Congratulations. Um, being a grandparent's the best because you get to do all the fun stuff. And when it comes to the, the negative stuff, you just hand them back off to the parents. <laughs> that's just... That's the best. The, the best. Um, I just started reading the book, Un-F Yourself. And that's, that's what you recommended, right? So, uh, Kimber... I have actually not read Unf Yourself. I do have it. Um, yeah, I do have it over there, but I haven't read it yet. Um, 
I the uh, the one that uh, I have read is the subtle art of not giving an F. <laughs> so many F bomb books, uh, and everything is F'd by Mark Manson. Those two books very good. Uh, Un F yourself. I've heard is very good. It's on my book list. Coming up pretty soon, actually. Um, congratulations, Carrie from Angel. Yeah, have to write it down. It helps. It does help a lot. It just makes it real. Um, best wishes from Deborah. Uh, Debbie says I'm a paper based person, so digital planners don't stick for me. It it is as if I type and forget it, but when I handwrite something, it stays with me, and that's very true. Now, some people have adapted better, especially if you've grown up on digital devices. They've adapted better, but that doesn't change what's naturally. Um, uh, you know, what, what's, what happens naturally for most people, uh, for actually almost everybody, is that writing is more real. Yeah, best wishes from Kelly. Um, all right, so what I wanted to talk about, and I actually closed my web page, so i got to reopen it here. There is uh, somebody in the user group, and I won't use your name unless you prefer to use it yourself. Uh, somebody in the user group was asking about that that uh, that active identity, right? Like, you know, how do you, like I talked about uh, being more active as a personal identity for myself. And so I wanted to talk about that real quick. That concept of having, like becoming, not just doing, right? And so for me, I want to create more of an active lifestyle for myself because in the past I've been, I'm a computer guy, right? I sit at a desk all day. Um, even doing this job, I sit at a desk quite a bit. Um, and, you know, being active was just sort of something I did. So I'd go to the gym and it was a segmented portion of my day. And um, what I want to have happen is that I want activity to become part of my life. So, you know, being outside, walking, um, doing more active things. And it's sort of proven, you know, like my lately on my watch, my activity levels have, have, I've, I've burned more calories just in my day-to-day -day movement than what I normally do when I exercise once a day, every day. So, and I haven't exercised in the past couple of weeks because I just haven't worked it into my schedule yet, but I've been so active otherwise and doing things I haven't really needed to. Not that it's not necessary, but it's just not been that high on the priority list because I've had so much other active things I've been doing. And so I didn't mean to bring it up to say that we all have to have this active identity, but the things we're trying to do, we want to make it part of who we are. You know, so, you know, uh, going, going back to the Michael Jordan thing, like winning was part of his identity, Right. And so he kind of made that who he was. Now, it can be dangerous because if you make it that much of your identity and then you end up losing, you know, it can shatter your identity, right? So we don't want to make it something like that. Um, but you want to make the behavior more of the identity rather than the result. So he was doing the behaviors of somebody that wins. That's somebody that's highly competitive. You know, he was every day acting in a way that he could, like, he was acting how a winner acts. And this is kind of like the, it, it's kind of making me think about this right now. Like, so he's not, like, he's not saying I am a winner. He's actually going out there and just doing the things to prove that he is a winner, right? And so, you know, in myself, bringing it back to my own life, you know, I'm not saying I'm the most organized or focused person in the world. I'm not saying that I achieve all of my goals, but what I am doing is daily working on and building better habits and routines, building deeper focus and talking about that, how that is going in my life. For you, you know, and actually before I go to you, for me, I want to be healthier right? I want to be as healthy as I can possibly be. And rather than going around saying, I am healthy, I am the healthiest person. I am you know, knowing that's not true, right? I'm coming back and saying, well, 
I need to make it more of my lifestyle to be a healthy person. So it's not I am healthy, it's maybe I am active or I take, you know, I uh, weave movement into my daily life. Like every day I am being healthy or I am becoming more healthy, right? And I'm doing the actions to be as healthy as I can be, right? And then every time I do an action that's counter to that, if I, you know, eat something that I shouldn't eat or eat too much of something I shouldn't eat, I just can be aware of that and go, mm, you know what, I need to back that down a little bit, right? And so it's this acknowledgement, it's understanding, it's giving yourself grace, like, yeah, I made a mistake, I can do it better tomorrow. You know, it's just this gentle shift of trying to move it and align it with who you want to be, connecting that ultimate vision of yourself with your daily actions, right? Our daily disciplines and doing this, this practice, all of the things that you're trying to do to become who you want to become, you need to be that person now. So you have to gently get back onto that path. If you're a teacher and you want to be a great teacher, you don't walk around going, I'm the greatest teacher in the world. You daily put into practice the actions that a great teacher takes, right? And so daily, you come up with a great lesson plan. You bring energy to your students. You know, you, you, you take time with the people that, that need it. Um, you know, so you do the things daily and it becomes who you are. And then eventually you get to that place where you can say to yourself, I'm satisfied with the way, that, the way things worked out because I put this effort into it. And that can be, you know, if you're a medical worker, if you're an accountant, whatever, you know, there are certain things, the behaviors of a great accountant. There are behaviors of a great medical worker. And, and anybody in the medical field can also think of pers some person that's not a good medical worker and can say, that person doesn't have good behaviors, right? Maybe they even think and they're telling everybody what a great worker they are, but the people around them know, like, they're not doing the behaviors that make them a really good medical worker, right? So, you know, there's, there's all, you know, it, it's that, kind of like what you want to define yourself as, that, that define the life that you want to create for yourself, bringing that vision of where you want to be to your daily actions and sort of integrating it into all the things that happen for you every day and all the action, you know, all the actions you take every day. And that's what creates the life that you define for yourself. So, you know, um, this, this person in the user group um, you know, there's a difference between active lifestyle, working out and therapy and, and kind of like what it is. And you have to figure out what that, what is most, you know, beneficial for you. You know, she says that she loves doing things that are sedentary. She loves reading. She loves handwork, writing and learning. And that's great. That's great. And I think I'm, I fall into that same category. And so what I've done is knowing that my end result, I need to be thinner, I'm lighter. I mean, my frame needs to carry less. It'll be better for my joints. Um, it'll be better for my heart. Uh, and so for me, I need to, in order to, to, to grow old and see my kids have their own kids, to be a grandparent myself like Carrie, then I need to be, I need to ingrain better habits into my daily life. And so some people, you know, you don't like working out, you don't like running, you don't like walking, you don't like going to the gym, but there can be something that you work into that. Now, this person, you know, when she was younger, she played volleyball and softball, and that made that activity social and fun. And, and, and I agree. So if I would have spent more time learning how to play basketball, I would probably still be playing basketball, whether it's with my kids or with friends or whatever. Um, I didn't invest that time early on. So now I have to think of like a different way to be active that I can learn and have fun with. Now, I, I tried golf for a while, but golf just took too much time. Uh, so now I need to figure it out. And so I want to, you know, as things wind down here, my wife and I have decided we're going to take walks around the neighborhood with a dog, uh, with the family. Um, you know, that'll help us get to meet people around the neighborhood. Um, it'll help us get to know the layout of the neighborhood. It'll give our dog some exercise that's healthy for her. Um, and if I'm alone, I can listen to headphones and I can listen to my podcast because I don't really have a commute anymore. So I can listen to podcasts. I can listen to an audiobook. 
and I can get around the neighborhood and exercise and, and that sort of thing. If that's not for you, you can find something that is. Uh, somebody recommended Tai Chi. Tai Chi, I've read myself, has some incredible health benefits. That could be good for you. Um, there are, you know, uh, Pilates and yoga that have meditative benefits uh, for you. Um, so you have more have to look at what benefits you want rather than the action that you want to take. Because a lot of times, especially if it doesn't come naturally for us, we don't want to do the actions. We just want the benefit, right? So, you know, whether it's doing define my day or meditating or practicing mindfulness or exercising, we don't want to do the action. We want the benefit. So what we need to do is understand that the short-term pain, by, by, by taking on that short-term pain, we're getting that long-term benefit and, and not assuming the long-term pain, Right. So we're taking the pain up front, the small pain up front, rather than the big pain in the back end. And that's what you want to do because you, you had that little bit of suffering, that little bit of stress on the body that gets you moving. Then uh, uh, you, you avoid a lot of long-term pain uh, at the end, right? And so you're making that investment now. Uh, same thing with Define My Day. You're taking 10 minutes now so you don't end up stressed out and anxious ridden later on. Uh, so you have to you have to trade one for the other. If you put things off and, and put off the pain, it just grows. You're investing in, you're you're you're, you're just sort of you're spending willy willy nilly now, and then you're going to end up with with crazy pain on the back end. Um, so you know, I, I read it once in a book about nutrition, where the guy said, "I don't eat like I used to eat for pleasure. Now I eat to fuel my body." And occasionally I'll have a good meal that I just really enjoy, but I don't look as at, at food as fun anymore. Like food is not a source of enjoyment for me. Being healthy is a source of enjoyment. Relationships are a source of enjoyment. Food is food. And there's food that tastes better than others, but food is food. So I feed myself so that I can enjoy every other aspect of my life. I feed myself with good food and I've learned to enjoy healthier food. And I thought about that and I thought, you know what, that's right. Because I can eat a very bad meal and think to myself, wow, this is great. But on the back end of it, I feel bad. I feel bloated. I feel like miserable, tired, like I don't want to move. And then I'm long-term unhealthy, but I enjoyed it for a few minutes there, right? Is that worth it? But this guy's perspective was that I enjoy all the big parts of my life by eating really healthy right now. And so I'm better for it. And so that's kind of the way I look at exercise too. It's like, you might not want to do it, but it's still necessary if you want to get there. So you just kind of like, you just have to do it, right? You just do it anyway. You eat healthy anyway, regardless of how you feel about it. You exercise anyway, regardless of how you feel about it. And I'm not admonishing you because this is the process I go through myself. Like I, this is what I've had to say to myself as I'm going to the gym or as I'm really going and doing anything that's good for me that I don't want to do. You're like suck it up and just do it. <laughs> that's kind of what I've been telling myself. Like you just need to do this because you want this end result and you're not going to get it if you keep doing the things you just want to do right now. And so that's how I've approached to find my day on days I don't want to do it. It's how I've approached eating on days that I didn't want to eat healthy. It's how I've approached exercise. Like sometimes you just need to do it because that's what you need to do. And that's like, I, I've had like, at that, at certain points in time, I've had zero empathy for the, the side of me that doesn't want to do it. Like that side of me that's complaining and making up excuses. I've just had to kind of flip a switch and say, you know what? Suck it up, man. You just got to do it anyway. Right. And so that's, that's how I've had to approach it. And so, you know, it, it certainly is easier long term if you can find things you enjoy doing. So if you enjoy playing softball, volleyball, if you enjoy golfing or tennis, if you enjoy swimming, um, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, gyms now, uh, like the bigger gyms or even maybe the Y has a like a pool that gives you current so you can just swim in one place. Um, 
you know, there's, there's different things you can do out there that, you know, if you have bad joints, you can, you can do different exercises. If you, if you have injuries that you need to work around, you can still do other exercises. It's a little bit different now with us, like gyms being closed and things, but there are still things that you can find to do. And I think I've sort of proven that in all the activity that I've had around the house right now, I've still met my calorie burn goals by just doing things around the house. You know, it's possible. We just need to add a little bit more. You know, it's that take the stairs uh, mentality, you know, like take the stairs instead of the elevator, just by adding a couple of minutes of activity every day, it adds up. And so we can probably do that around the house. Um, you know, even like when uh, points in time where I've been lazy, where I like forgot something downstairs and I'm like, oh, I'll just get it later. Now I've actually had the thought like, no, you need the, you need the, you need the steps. Like you need that little bit of heart rate boost. So you know, I literally run down the steps or run back up the steps uh, because I look at that activity as like exercise in the moment, right? A way to get my blood flowing and my heart pumping, you know? And so, you know, if you look at little opportunities, like if you say to my, say to yourself, I am more active, you don't need to make it a hour long run for 10 miles. You can say, you know, like uh, this person right here that's talking about you know, you, you like reading and whatever, you know, you like sedentary activities. You know, you don't need to even make it a point to just jump up and, and run around, right? You just need to say, or, or maybe I don't you don't need to do this, but you could you could just say, you know, okay, um, when I go, when I uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of something an example I can use right now. But uh, you know, after I'm done reading um, I will, you know, go out to the mail and walk around the house a couple of times. So, you know, I don't know what that might be for you. Um, but you know, you can, you can add little points of activity between your sedentary activities. Um, but if you want to create an identity around something else, you can do that. If you want to create, if you are an active person and you want to learn more, you can create an activity or an identity of being more studious. You know, if, if, if you want to be more studious, if you want to learn more, create an environment where you can learn more. You know, like pre-set up uh, the podcast, like pre-download educational podcasts. Have a book sitting around, and you know when you have when you find yourself doing nothing, whether you're screwing around on your phone or you're just kind of sitting around, pick up that book and just read two pages, right, and see if you can go for a little bit longer. And so you can create this, this identity of being more studious. And there's, there's all sorts of things you can do. If you want to create an idea, identity of being a great employee, think of what makes a great employee, you know, hardworking, dedicated, doesn't get into drama with other people, um, has open lines of communication with their boss and their subordinates. Um, you know, uh, thinks about the team uh, over themselves. Uh, now, that, that we're not talking about toxic relationships where you're being used as an employee. We're talking about, if we're assuming that you are in a good environment. So, you know, all of the things that like you can list, like the positives of an employee and the negative negatives on the, of an employee. And if you list, if you have these two lists, if you see yourself engaging in negative uh, activities, then you're just aware of it and you're like, oh no, I need to steer more towards the positive list, right? And you just do this for yourself. It can be your own opinion and it might switch a little bit, um, but you can read, uh, you know, management books and, and like there also, even if you're not a manager, you can read management books and kind of understand like what makes a good manager and understand like how to be a good employee for a manager and then eventually get promoted into that position if that's your goal. So there's all sorts of different things, but it's, it's that mindset shift that has, um, you know, that, that has to take place. You know, if your identity is being a good friend, you know, what are all the characteristics of a good friend? What are the char characteristics of a bad friend and shifting more toward the good friend column than the bad friend? Same thing with parents. And, and you look, know, look, we all make mistakes. We all flip out on our kids once in a while. We all are bad friends. We don't call back. We don't answer messages. We don't answer emails. Um, maybe we talk about ourselves a little bit more than we feel like we should. All the things that make up a bad friend, bad friend. Um, 
you know, occasionally happens, right? And we just say, you know what? No, I could, I could have been a little bit more understanding in that moment. I could have been a little bit less temperamental. I could have been um, a little more available. You know, like whatever that might be, you just make that gentle shift. You know, like so, and, and I always look at this as, as like a path, like the path I want to be on and the actions that I'm taking that are, you know, on the path that I'm currently on. And all I'm doing is just taking little steps to move over to the correct path because I'm not far off. But when you're far, when you're when you're a little bit off day in and day out, you can end up miles away from your goal. And that's the point of being intentional and being mindful and writing down our goals, you know, whether it's relationship or business or whatever in our define my day every day, because if we're trying to make sure that we're staying on our path. And so, you know, that helps us build this identity of who we want to be. It helps you define the life that you want for yourself. That's what our whole concept is about, is defining the life that you want. Not the life that I want for you or the life that anybody else wants for you. It's the life that you want so that when you reach the end of it, you're happy with the result. You can look back on it and say, I did what I needed to do for myself and for the people around me. I'm proud of how I live this life. And so sometimes that means doing something that you don't want to do right now because it leads you to that place where you can look back and say, I'm happy with this. All right, let's get into the comments here and then I'm going to take off. The one thing, uh, question I have for you before anybody leaves, I uh, saw that somebody had a question about time blocking for moms. And... I know what my life looks like as an active dad in the house working from home. I want you guys to give me examples of things that you do as a stay-at-home mom or a working mom, either that you do do now or that you did do when you were in that time period. And I want to talk about that in our next session, like how to time block for somebody that is a mom and like where there's always like a pool of a lot of things going on. So give me some examples of what you're doing in a regular day. Um, and we're going to talk about that on Friday. I can't be here tomorrow for this session tomorrow because I have an appointment at 930. But I do want to have a conversation about this on Friday and go through time blocking for uh, a mom. And, and the specific question in the user group, I'll talk, to, talk about it right now. So, uh, so she says, here's the conundrum. Time blocking for moms. Why? The housework is schizophrenic. Laundry may take an hour, but not in a solid block. Homeschooling, especially at the high school level, can also be in bits and pieces and takes precedence. And of course, all of this worked in around working outside the home. For me, however, work is not a priority per se. It's more of a to-do list item. So how does one time block for circular activities and remember to circle back to grab other bits and pieces? And that's why they are schizophrenic. So uh, I would love for you guys to give me examples of things that you have to do uh, at work and at home. And we're going to try to piece together a time block for somebody in this in a similar situation for this. Um, I'm getting into the comments real quick here. Um, Debbie says, uh, ask the question, is this helping or hurting my health? Very good. That's very good. Is this good for me? Right? I ask that when I'm doing like to-do list items. Does this need to be done? Or if I don't get it done, uh, does it matter? Yeah, Bill says, I can't do digital planners. Need to do it on paper. Yeah, and, and so I use uh, you know paper for the planner. I use a digital calendar because a calendar is simple. I don't need, that doesn't define me, right? So a calendar is just, you know, telling me something that I've already thought through here. Uh, it's just kind of like showing me like, okay, at 10 o'clock we have a live session scheduled and we have to be there for that. But it's not like I'm not living that, you know? I don't know if that makes sense. And Sandy says, actions speak louder than words. And this is something that I always grew up with. My dad always told me, you don't talk about yourself, you let other people do it for you. And that's positive stuff, right? Now, in this kind of world that we live in right now, it seems like the people that talk about themselves uh, get more attention. Uh, uh, 
you know, and which is hard. It's a hard thing to deal with if you grew up with this action speaks louder than words mentality. But I th I'm wondering if things are going to change now. We'll see how that goes. Well, I don't know. I don't know. But I think people can also see a lot of times the people that talk about themselves very often. Uh, they see like there's a radar that goes off that says something about this isn't genuine. Kimber, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, Bill says, good eating, good eating is fun. Healthy food is fun. Really fun. It's how you feel. So it's a matter of perspective, right? Right. So, I mean, look, I could eat pizza all day long. I could eat steak all day long and I could tell you, I hate salads, but after eating a salad and mixing in a couple of fun little foods in there, salads start to taste really good right? And then the way you feel after eating a salad for a few weeks or longer, hopefully, feeling good feels better than eating a pizza every day, right? I know how bad I feel. Like I, I literally have not had McDonald's in all, years at this point. And if I go back and have a McDonald's hamburger right now, I will feel terrible. It would taste good going down, but I will feel terrible for a day after that. So, you know, and, and, and Bill's, I think Bill's point here is that like, it's a matter of perspective. If you go into eating, if you go into eating healthy food with this mentality of like, oh, this is going to be terrible. Yes, it will be terrible. Right? Like, so like, you've got it, like you, you have to look at it differently. Lori says, yes, this is a daily struggle for me. I know what I need to do, but it's just getting myself to do it. Thanks for giving me that push. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I've navigated this, you know, like there are some points in time when I need, just need to be like tough on myself, right? Like, dude, just stop complaining in your own mind and just do it. You're wasting so much time and energy just complaining about it, right? And stressing out about it. Just do it, you big baby. Right. I've had this conversation, but then there are other times, like, especially right now with diet, there's a weird kind of nuance here where like when you, when you just, when you make it such a big struggle and you build it up to be such a big struggle in your head, you know, you eat well for a long time. And then because you've been just going against the grain for so long, it just collapses. And then you end up eating worse than ever before. So it's this, yeah, there's the, like the right kind of nuance to deal with yourself. And, and like, you want to be understanding, but at the same time, sometimes you just have to be tough on yourself, but you can't be tough on yourself for too long or it gets into like the self-loathing thing. So it's, it's, it's a weird, a weird place to try to navigate to. And I think it, it all comes down to understanding yourself and your motivations and, and what makes you who you are. And I think that daily understanding and mindfulness just helps you navigate it just a little bit better. Uh, Francine says, a doctor told my friend who is in her 80s to get up when TV commercials come on and walk around and do things for the exercise for her achy joints. That's actually a great example that I could not think of. So there you go. Like nobody wants to watch commercials, right? So every time a commercial hits, you get up and you walk around. That's three minutes of activity. If you're watching the TV for two hours, and the commercials come on, what, like probably four or five times during a show. And you walk around four times for every half an hour show. That means you're walking, uh, what is that, two, uh, 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 like 15 minutes every hour, maybe 20 minutes every hour. And you're getting 40 minutes of exercise and two hours of TV watching. What? What? It's, it's just like, it's just a little perspective switch, a little, a little change in activity. And all of a sudden you're getting more exercise than I do when I go to the gym. Right. Um, coach Jennifer Kerstetter works with this mind shift. I think actually I have that book. If she wrote that book or are you just saying mind shift? I don't know. Um, Debbie says, I was recently told by a mentor to ask myself the following. Have I committed to the process? If not, then come back to the desired path, set your intent and engage accordingly. And so that's very much it. A lot of our, a lot of us, you know, 
say we're buying into the process. We want the results, but then we modify the process. We pick out the parts we like and throw away the things we don't like, not realizing the things we don't like are actually the things that need to be done to get us to that place. Like you can't, you can't execute on a process uh, poorly and expect the results that they promise you in any process. Um, didn't President Lincoln say that? I don't know. I don't know which, which thing you're talking about, but sorry. Um, Lavi says, sending you a message about the mom topic. That is huge, huge, huge topic for me too. Cool. Yeah, I look forward to seeing it. Um, Lavi says, a prob probably a huge topic for most women. If we're still raising children, even if we are at home mothers, we do have a job title. It's called domestic engineering. It does not come with vacation or sick days. There's no door to close or alarm to tell you the day is done. On call 24 seven time blocking is possible. Just look different. And yeah. And so me and Lynn, both being incredibly active in our kids' lives, giving that structure to the kids is also vitally important. Um, you know, my kids, I tell them, look, uh, you're doing your schoolwork from this time to this time. Uh, at this time, you can be done or you can take a break. Uh, we are eating lunch at noon. We are uh, walking outside at one o'clock. We are like, so they know, like they are learning the boundaries of, 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 of the day uh, very early on. And like right now at 11 o'clock, my boy's alarm goes off on his phone and he has to go clean up dog poop every day. So he's out there. I can look in the backyard cleaning up dog poop at 11 in the morning. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's teaching them young to adhere to a schedule and be on time and all that sort of thing. Um, and they get it from me. Like at 930, like right now their bedtime is 930. If, if 932, they're still doing things that are not related to them getting ready for bed, they're getting in trouble, right? And, and it's like, I don't even want to get them in. I don't even want to be like upset. But it's like, you know, and, and, and the more like the more I stick to it, the less upset I am. I'm like 932 guys, let's go. You know, like it's either like, let's go. Or like, if I have to tell you again tomorrow, you're going to lose something. And then they know. And then I follow through on you know, them losing the thing. But keeping them on that schedule helps me too. Because then I can do what I need to do. Like, look, I'm working right now. You're doing your thing. I'm working. At 12 o'clock, we'll have lunch together. Like it's it, if we, the more rigid we are with that, the, the, the healthier it is. Um, the Debbie says there are many reasons to not do the right things, do them anyway. And I feel like this has been lost over the past couple of years. Like it, we really need to do them anyway. <laughs> That's they're the right things. They're not the easy things, right? That's what our program works on. Uh, let's see. Sherelle says, how do you get beyond guilt or regrets of things you could have done better reacted differently? Trying to start a new career at 66, but I think I'm 40. Hey, good for you. Uh, trying to reinvent and be admired instead of felt sorry for and seen as a survivor only. Have felt for years that there are some against me affecting my career and personal life. I've not heard you before and just happened upon you this morning. Well, Sherelle, thank you for joining me. Um, I, uh, and, and Debbie saying, glad you're here for me being here has been a wonderful reminder of what is possible. Continue to join us. I agree with that too. Uh, but Sherelle, so, you know, I think it's great that you're trying to start a new career at 66. That's incredible. Um, you know, I think that reinventing yourself is hard. I've tried to do that myself over, the, over time. It's not easy. I think because Number one, you've created relationships with people that are used to you uh, for who you are, right? They've been attracted to you for who you are. Um, they know how to interact with you based on who you have been. And any change in that uh, is disruptive to that relationship. Even if you, you are starting to become a more positive person, you, and you mentioned in here uh, felt you know, that you've been felt sorry for, uh, you want to be more admired than somebody being being so felt sorry for. Um, and the relationships around you, they're used to feeling sorry for you then, right? If that's truly what's happening, they're used to that. And so you're now shifting the relationship or trying to shift the relationship 
here to where you're admired. So you're, in a way, you're going from here and you want them to admire you. And so maybe, you know, maybe admiration can come, but maybe that's not the end result you're shooting for. Maybe, you know, if, if, if maybe your goal, like, say, okay, maybe it's not bad to be admired, right? So maybe being admired for something isn't bad. But there are, there are points in between. And so maybe that's part of taking the steps. And so maybe, you know, you don't want anybody to feel sorry for you. So you, you have to shift that mentality a little bit, shift that perspective for, on their side of things if you want to maintain these relationships um, where you show the actions of somebody that is taking care of themselves, right? And you do it in the most positive way possible. And if somebody starts displaying an action that makes you feel like they're feeling sorry for you, you have to sort of decide how to address that. Do you address it actively and say, you know, even ask, you know, why, what made you say that? Or why do you feel that way? You know, maybe you, you go right at it if that's your personality, if you're, if you're capable of having that conversation. Um, if, if you don't want to have that conversation yet, then maybe you explore it and think of like what may have triggered that response from that person. Maybe something that you did triggered that response and you have to then like maybe shift how your behaviors are causing that and maybe you, you change something you're doing there. It's, it's hard because it's hard not knowing specifics, but I, I, the overall process uh, is not easy. And I, I mention it like myself. I had a lot of relationships that were built over decades, right? And, and people defined me as a certain type of person. And even going back into those relationships, I find myself slipping into old behaviors. It's just like they're pre-programmed into my mind. And I had to pull away from a lot of those relationships and sort of kind of become a hermit for a couple of years as I was sort of learning who I wanted to be and learning the behaviors of somebody that wanted to be that person. So it's hard. It's hard. And at 66, you know, it, like like associating yourself, yourself with new people at 66, people that, you know, are going to uh, be in this new place with you, uh, it's, it's probably not easy, uh, but it's certainly something you can do. Um, uh, and I think that, uh, I think it's a, it's a great journey that you're going to find yourself on. Um, I would do everything you can to learn about being, um, independent and learn about being assertive and learn about being, um, uh, this, this type of person that, you know, people look up to that people admire for whatever qualities that you want to be admired for. Um, one of the books that comes to mind that I read a few years ago that I think might help with this is the book Captivate by, by uh, Vanessa Van, I can't remember her full name, but the book name is Captivate. And uh, it's, uh, I can even look it up real quick. Vanessa Van Edwards is her name. Captivate. Um, and of course, I'm going to come up with a bunch of different review, uh, different Adobe products, not actually what I want. Vanessa Van Edwards. Um, it's called Captivate, the Science of Succeeding with People. Um, and Science of People is her website. Um, so uh, check that out. She does a lot of videos, um, but it's all about that interaction that happens with people and, uh, you know, how to sort of hack that a little bit. Um, and it goes into like, uh, uh, subtle cues, facial cues that we all give each other. Uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, but continue to join us. Uh, I think that this process can really help you out. Um, your journey is very, very much like where I feel like my journey was a couple of years ago. Um, and it's it, the fact that you're even trying to do it is amazing. So keep it up um, and keep checking in with us. And uh, I wish you the best. Absolutely. Uh, Janice says uh, time block schedule is routine. Uh, that, 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 that. Block schedule routine is what they follow in school. Very strict. And I think that's why kids do well 
in school, a structured environment, learning like, you know, 945, period two, like whatever, whatever it is. And when we bring that home, I think it really helps. Sherelle says, unfortunately, my career has defined me, but I'm so much more than that. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people let that happen. I think it's this generational thing where, you know, we, we, we feel like it's, it's, it's very much a baby boomer, Gen Xer. And then it, I think it started, it started shifting after that. Uh, but I'm in this, I'm on the cusp of it where, you know, like your career is who you are. And now like the younger people are kind of understanding that that's not the case. Uh, and it's, it's had some backlash, right? But I think they're, they're not totally off base with that. And so, you know, we want to get to this place where, uh, you know, we transcend the work we do. Um, so, and uh, I, again, I think you're, you're there, like you're, don't look at this as anything to regret. And I think that might even be something you mentioned in the very beginning of your comment. How do you get beyond guilt or regrets of things you could have done better or reacted differently? You, the only thing you can do is forgive, right? The only thing you can do is, is look at yourself with compassion, you know, and say that that's something I did and it was a mistake. And, uh, you know, I want to do better next time. I'm still doing it now. I've done many stupid things. And I'll tell you, I will... I can think of a moment I was standing in the shower and had this random thought about something that I did that was really stupid. I said something really stupid uh, years ago. I mean, it's not even like not even within the past 10 years. And um, I, I it still made me cringe that I was even the person that said this thing. And so, you know, you just sort of like understand, like even I have to understand that it was awful. And I have to remember that the next time I'm triggered to say something similar, I need to stop and take another path. And the fact that you have the ability to even think about those things and have those regrets shows that you are still a learning and growing person. It's the people, and I have people in my life that are always blaming other people that are always, you know, making everybody else responsible for the things that are happening in their lives. Those are the people that I feel awful for because they are never going to be able to make the changes and never be able to understand their own responsibility in what is happening to them. You are not there. You are in a place where you're saying, I have regrets about the way I acted. You are taking that responsibility. Now, the gift to you is that you can change how you act today, tomorrow, and the next day. Understanding that you are still going to make mistakes. Understanding that, you know, it's a curve, right? I have behaviors that I don't like. And I can say to myself now in a calm state, I will never do that again. And then find myself in a situation where I'm either wrapped up in emotion or just on this automatic thought track where I say or do something and I immediately go, oh, you stupid. Why would you do that? Right? Why would you say that? And then, But the more that happens, the more ingrained in my mind is like that trigger that happens afterward starts happening earlier and it becomes an early warning system. And I can identify that familiar track that takes me down the wrong path. And now instead of saying or doing something that I don't like, that I don't think is on, on path for me, instead of that regret happening after, I get alarm bells before. And I can, I, those bells start going off as I start noticing the familiarity of this track. And I can, I can start anticipating it going, nope, no, you're going to a bad place. You need to stop and back away and, and turn right now. Like you need to do something right now to change the direction this is going, or you're going to do something again that you regret. And so just your awareness of it is huge. Making the decision to change it is huge. And then now it's developing that familiarity with what brings you to that event. 
in changing it, taking another path that brings you to this place where you want to be. Whether it's not being felt sorry for or whatever that, whatever, whatever it is for you. Right. And so, and that's, you're on this path now and you're, you're getting it. And that growth is going to continue to happen. As long as you, you don't take it on yourself and let it crush you. You just sort of look at it and say, okay, yep, I need to change it. That's okay. I can make improvements. I'm going to work on it. Oh, I messed up today. That's okay. I'm going to do better after this. I'm going to learn from it. I understand what brought me here. I'm going to keep going, keep going and growing and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Uh, Sherelle, you feel you've been asleep the past 10 years and wake up at an age I'm totally freaked out about. <laughs> uh, I'm awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're awesome too for going through this. You're awesome for waking up and understanding it. I've been there too, right? I caught it earlier than you. Uh, and hopefully uh, we'll continue to, to stay on this path. Um, but that doesn't mean that, I mean, look, you caught it, right? You caught it. And I think that's the big thing is that you said like, like 10 years I was on autopilot. Yeah. And, and, and for me, my regret, one of my biggest regrets is that I let the healthiest years of my life go. And now I'm trying to recover that. I let, you know, 10 years of my first boy's life uh, go. And only in the most recent years have I understood that I need to spend more time with him. I need to be a better father. And I'm trying to make those adjustments so that I'm there for my six-year-old now. And, you know, it's the fact that you caught it is something to be happy about and proud about. Proud about. It's not something to feel uh, ashamed of. It's not something to feel bad about. You know, you let the 10 years go. You understand it. Don't let the next 10 go, Right. Don't let the next 20 go. Make the changes now as best you can in the healthiest way possible and live the life that you want to live, appreciating what you want to appreciate. You'll get there. You will get there. The fact that you're even identifying this is amazing. Debbie, when, the past, when a past decision or action was negative or wrong, take the lesson you learned and concentrate on that. Learn from it and move forward to better decisions and actions in the future. No one makes perfect decisions every time. Live, learn, and keep moving forward. You are worth that and will serve as an example to others who may be at a crossroads in their life and wonder if they can do the same. Change and self-fulfillment is worth it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, and I think that's the saddest part for me is I've one of my struggles in recent years has been um, trying to decide at what point I have to let go of other people because they won't change, right? Um, because certain people won't grow this awareness and will continue on a negative path, a toxic path, um, you know, that the blaming others, the not taking responsibility for their own actions. And I've talked about this with, you know, a psychologist, with, with professionals, and unfortunately, their response, and I almost refuse to believe it, their response has been the saddest part is they will probably die never understanding their responsibility for where they are in life. And I almost refuse to accept that. I feel like there's got to be something that can, that, can, that can snap this person to some sort of awareness. But some people get caught in their own thought processes that they can't, they can't get there. Um, and I don't want to write people off. Um, but I also know that I need to set healthy boundaries for myself. Um, and this goes for, you know, the, 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 you know, people that make the political comments on Facebook or wherever that, you know, you almost can't have a, a rational conversation with. Um, it goes for our family members that just continue to create toxic relationships. Um, you know, you wish you could say something or do something magically to have a healthy relationship, um, but um, it, it, you sometimes just can't. And I think so when you talk about, you know, making the changes and being an example and that sort of thing, um, you know, uh, and, and triggering others to want to do the same, um, I think that's kind of my mission in, in all of this is to help other people go through this process um, like I have, uh, but 
you know, the, the hard part is understanding that some people just uh, won't. Uh, they, they, they aren't capable at the moment. Um, so we're trying to catch the people that are ready now uh, while trying to influence others to be ready. Um, and also understanding that some people just won't do it. So it's a, sorry, that's my own little diatribe about how, how I'm trying to figure out, um, you know, people around us. Um, but, uh, that's, uh, that's all I have for today. I know we ran a little bit over today. I appreciate you sticking with me. Um, I will not be here tomorrow because we have an appointment or I have an appointment at nine 30 tomorrow. So I won't be here for tomorrow's session, but I will be here Friday. And I want to talk about time blocking for, uh, people specifically moms, um, uh, you know, to see how we can best get through that conversation. Please give me as any as Ooh, excuse me. Please give me as many examples as possible uh, to help. Uh, you know, let, let's try to figure out a, a, a time block for somebody. And I want to give you an example of a, a time blocked day. So have a great day. Uh, stay healthy. Keep moving forward. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Or, I'm sorry. No, I won't. I'll talk to you again Friday. Bye.